you today. We thank you. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful to you, Lord, and we receive your presence in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Good morning, Christian faith. Good morning to the Mill Creek family. Great to have you with us on the north side, and good morning to all of our online family. We're glad you're there wherever you may be watching from. Hey, big day for us, special day in the house. We're celebrating the nations. We call it International Sunday. And we have a very special guest all the way from Australia. Brian Houston's in the house. So we're just, we're just having all kinds of fun at church. Now, I want to do something here before we pray, uh, and, and I'm going to ask all of our people born in America, if you were born in the United States, if you would be seated for a moment, all the folks who were born in the United States. Now, look, we actually have more people standing than we do sitting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. So we celebrate, we thank God that our church family represents our world. All the nations, all the languages, all the races, all the cultures, we love it. And uh, I think it's something special here at Christian Faith, and we want you to feel embraced and loved and celebrated and uh, we're thanking God that you're a part of our family. Of course, here on the platform, we've got all the nations represented. Uh, let's see, we got Ukraine, we got Russia, we got S Mexico, Samoa. Antoine, where are you from, bro? Tacoma? That's a strange country. Philippines, Colombia, Canada. How'd you get out of Canada, Terry? I didn't know that you could cross the border these days. Let's pray for the nation's church. Father, we pray for our friends who are standing here today. We pray for their nation, for whatever challenges, whatever needs, whatever issues may be going on there. 
We pray, God, that you are moving in each country. We pray for unity. Uh, we pray that the strength of the Holy Spirit would draw us together. We come against strife and division and anger and prejudice and hatred and all that's causing our world to suffer. And Lord, may we be an example that Jesus wins. No matter what or who may be against us, if God is for us, we win in Jesus' name. And Lord, may we overcome the strife, the sickness, the prejudice, the politics. May we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen. Hey, what's up, online church family? Welcome to Sunday morning. And guess what? It's not just any Sunday morning. It is International Sunday, like Pastor Casey was saying. So we are just celebrating all of the diversity that makes Christian faith what it is. We really are a tapestry of all these beautiful cultures. And it's so great that we get to take a Sunday out of the year to celebrate us as a Christian faith church family. All right, y'all. Today is going to be special. And guess what? The next couple of days are going to be special because we've got not only International Sunday happening this morning, but we've got Revival Night starting tonight at 6 p.m. And we've got it again tomorrow, Monday night, 6 p.m. and Tuesday day at 6 p.m. So it's, it's the same. The next three days, 6 p.m. here, Revival Nights. It's going to be amazing. We are believing for a move of the Holy Spirit to just take over within us, within our church, within our community, within our families. You guys, it's just going to be such a great and powerful couple of days. And I do not want you to miss it because it's going to be so amazing. You don't want to not get to be a part. So tune in 6 p.m. We got Revival Nights or come come to the building. Come hang out with us. We want to see you. Um, so Revival Nights are going to be huge. And guess what? I got another surprise. We got Pastor Brian Houston with us in the house today for International Sunday and for Revival. So it's just so great. It's going to just be like this huge explosion of awesomeness as Pastor Brian brings forth a powerful word this morning and then again tonight. So we're just believing that God's got something special planned, that he is stirring something good up for us as a church family. So I hope you all are expectant and ready for the move of the Lord. It's going to be so so great. Um, Y'all, I really want to encourage you, if you haven't done this already, download the Christian Faith Church app. I say this every week, y'all. Download the Christian Faith Church app because it is such a great resource for you to have. Not only do you have a space for note-taking, which is my personal favorite, but you also can tune into live Bible studies on Wednesdays, and those are so great. Our pastors dive deep into the Word and just like dissect all of it with you. So it's so cool. Make sure that you've got that um, we've also got Christianity 101 that happens on, um, or not happens, it's on Christian Faith Church app. It's so great. That is all about the foundations of being a Christian. And so it's really cool. There's a lot of good stuff on there. It also has all of our events. So we just really want to encourage you to download the Christian Faith Church app. But for this morning, I really want to encourage you to share make sure that wherever you're watching from that you are sharing this word because you never know which one of your friends or family members or that person that you know might be a friend on Facebook that you actually don't really know they might need this word too so press share because you never know what they're going through and they might see huh this person shared this let me just let me just give it a try let me just watch this and then they click on it and their life is transformed like that is so cool that you get to be the light of the world just by pressing share. Also, we want to encourage you guys to be commenting and engaging with us throughout service because we are family and we don't want you to feel disconnected. When you're watching on a screen from somewhere else, it's really easy to feel like I'm just watching this. This is just happening, but it's not true. We are in this together. And as you comment, as you engage, then we get to comment and engage back and you really do feel more apart. Um, so we really, really, really want you guys doing that because we also just want to talk to you. We love to chat with our church family. So send in all the comments and um, maybe it's something that God is speaking directly to you you can be like hey that was for me I am I am going through that or I really needed that scripture just let us know 
anything works. And we also want to encourage y'all to send in your prayer requests and your praise reports because you never want to be doing life alone. You are, we are meant to do life together. That is the most important part of being a Christian. So we want you to send in those prayer requests so we can believe alongside of you and also celebrate the good things that God is doing. All right, church family, let's hop back into service. Sunday. Let's get our tithe and offering ready. Come on, we love to give and we live to give. Number one, you need to remember when you give to Christian faith, you're giving to many ministries, local and international. And the number one thing that we are always keeping in mind is reaching lost people. Last week, 62 people got born again. Come on, somebody. 62 that weren't in the kingdom of God now are in the kingdom of God. Okay, we want more. We, we want 100, we want 600, we want 1,000 every week. But at least we got a few that we're bringing into the kingdom of God. When was the last time you brought an unsaved person, invited an unsaved person to your life group, right? Let your light shine for Christ in our giving. Number one. We're helping the lost. We're teaching the word of God. We're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Corporations can do a lot of help, food, clothing, shelter. A lot of organizations do a lot of good things. How many do altar calls? How many are preaching the gospel? How many are bringing the word? Is that you, Lord? I'm not sure if there was a message in that or not. But let's give, let's bring our tithe, let's bring our offering. Go to PushPay and uh, you'll find Christian Faith on PushPay and you can give that way, it's so easy. Set up your reoccurring giving or get an envelope, use a check, use cash, whatever you like to do. Find a way to be faithful in your generosity to the Lord. Seek first. The kingdom of God and everything else you want will be added unto you. Where's God on your budget list? Where is the kingdom on your budget list? Number one or down the list of ways? Let's seek first. Thank you, Father, for generous people. Thank you for a generous congregation in Mill Creek, in Federal Way, online. You have brought great people together. We love to give, and we live to give. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, ushers. And here is the Christian Faith Update. Hey, what's up, Christian Faith Church family? My name is Morgan, and here is the Christian Faith Church Update. Church family, don't forget, starting next weekend, we no longer have Saturday night services, but we do have three Sunday morning services. They will be at 9 a.m., 10.15, and 11.45. I'm going to say it one more time just in case you forgot. 9 a.m., 10.15, and 11.45. We are so excited for what God is doing here at Christian Faith, and we are believing that we are going to reach even more people for Jesus with these three new service times. Growth Track is starting right now. And this week, they're studying purpose and destiny, which is all about you fulfilling your purpose-driven life. If you haven't done Growth Tracks, head out to the foyer where a Growth Track host will meet you. Or if you're watching online, text Tracks to 21777 and we'll send you a link to get involved. Life Group's fall season is starting September 19th. Life Groups are a fundamental part of Christian living. God created us for community, so it's so important that you get involved with a group who can encourage you in your walk with Jesus. If you haven't gotten into a life group yet, September 19th, we are holding an open house where you can find all the different life groups that there are to join, and we really want to encourage you to get involved. While remaining a part of the herd, antelope find strength in numbers. With a large group, it's harder for predators to pick out individuals. Being the fastest animal on land has its advantages. Traveling over 71 miles per hour, the cheetah chases down its prey. Outside of the group, the antelope is found alone and is no match for the predator. Hey, church. 
Church family, today is the day. We've got revival nights happening tonight at 6 p.m. and then tomorrow and Tuesday at 6 p.m. as well. And guess what? Pastor Brian Houston of Hillsong Church is here with us again tonight. So make sure that you've got it in your calendars. The next three nights, revival nights, 6 p.m. You are not gonna wanna miss this. This one's for the dudes here at Christian Faith. It's time to step up and be a man. We've got the men's event happening on September 24th, and we've got guests with us, the Katinas, who are gonna lead us in worship and the word. Make sure to mark it in your calendars because you're not gonna wanna miss this. We're gonna have games and barbecue and a ton of fun. And guess what? We'll open the doors at five so that you can have all the food and all the fellowship. We'll see you there. That's it for the update. Now enjoy a special song prepared by our creative team to celebrate the diversity at Christian Faith.
you, Father. Thank you, God, that your spirit is healing and renewing and reviving and restoring our soul, our health, our strength. We believe, Lord. We believe in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Amen. You may be seated. So good to have you with us today on a very special day. I follow apologize for our technical difficulties. Our goal was to sing that song in many languages, which we did. However, we did not get it. Uh, the audio failed us somehow. I think a devil, a demon got in the system. It was the devil's fault. But we got no te technical difficulties with Dr. Brian Houston in the house. Let me, let me share the official stuff first. He's the global senior pastor of Hillsong Church. He's a, it's a global congregation of more than 100,000 weekly attendees. Come on, somebody. That's a great church right there. Considered by many, and I would be one of those, as a leading voice in shaping contemporary leadership values and church culture. Brian and and all of Hillsong Church have put so much into the church all over the world. Brian is highly regarded for his bold innovation and passion for local church. His infectious love for people and his empowering brand of leadership is beamed to millions weekly through his program, Brian Houston and Hillsong Television. Do you watch Hillsong Television? And they draw tens of thousands annually to the Hillsong Conference in Sydney, London, and New York City. He's the president of everything, everywhere. He's amazing. But most of all, he's our friend and part of our family here at Christian Faith. Over 30 years speaking for us and uh, being a friend I've called Brian, asked questions, going through stuff in life, and uh, you know, we just keep marching together. I suppose as you grow a little older, you start looking around to see who's still with you, and thank God we have a friend like Brian Houston and Bobby and all of the Hillsong family, part of our church here in the great Northwest. So let's stand up. Thank the Lord for Pastor Brian Houston. Ah, uh, good to be here. Seattle, Christian Faith Center, one of my favorite places to be. Again, with close friends. And I was thinking when he was reading that big long list of things, I thought, well, on my bad day, I just need to play that to myself, encourage myself, you know. But uh Always special to be here. Been coming 32 years, 32 years. So you guys can be seated. Uh, 32 years. And so Terry, who's playing the keyboard, he was young then. <laughs> Casey was young then. I was young then. Now I'm gonna try hard to kind of look young. But, because uh, <laughs> when I started coming here 30 years ago, uh, I have to add a ponytail, so I'm trying to re relive my youth, but unfortunately there's not as much hair back there as there used to be, so <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Robin the robber. John 10 verse 10, many would know. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Never have any doubt about his intention. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it in Abundance, abundant life, not meager life. Well, steal, kill, and destroy. And of course, the scripture also says about the devil, he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I wanna encourage you to decide today to decide he may not. He's seeking whom he may devour, but we've got the, I believe, the authority to say he may not. But we're living in crazy times. All my life, all my pastoring years, I've never needed wisdom like I do today in leading a church. So many 
So many things have entered into the equation. And of course, the pandemic has underlined so many challenges in Australia. We are totally locked down. Can't even have one visitor in our house. And when I go back next Wednesday, we've been in the States four and a half months. When I go back next Wednesday, two weeks, compulsory lockdown in a hotel. But you don't choose a hotel, you don't choose your room. They put you on a bus with the, the police watching on and take you to wherever they're taking you. And two weeks, you can't go outside that door. Three knocks a day on the door, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And in plastic containers, worse than coach class food on an aeroplane, you, they leave a plastic container of food. You, you could almost call it food on the ground. And you're not allowed to go out there until the person's walked well away. So thank God for Christian Faith Centre and you're in church and we should never ever take it for granted again. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. We've got to make that decision. The devil may not. So just some things that the devil would love to steal and to kill and destroy during this season. Uh, understanding that they have power. I want to encourage you to think about it. The devil would love, number one, to steal our unity. Unity is powerful. And the power of unity is not just in the church. It's in our own lives. You know what the Bible says about unity? Psalm 133, verse one. Listen to it very carefully. It says, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there, the Lord commands a blessing. He doesn't just suggest it. It's not a recommendation. It's just not something that may happen. It's a command. I love that thought because where there's unity, blessing is inevitable. God commands it. And of course, if it comes to church life or a marriage or a partnership or even our own body, soul and spirit, I mean, if those are not all aligned and working in the same area, your spirit knows this, but your soul is doing that, then that's not aligning ourselves with the blessing promise of God. Unity. Unity, it doesn't just bring blessing to the thing that we're unified around. We're unified around Jesus. We're unified around the church in this instance. Everyone say, church. <laughs> hey, so, and so yes, unity, it's inevitable where there's real unity, blessing will impact the church. But it's not just limited to the thing we're unified around. I believe those people who contribute to unity, the promise of blessing is on you. I think when we are intentional, because that's what unity is, it's not something we're passive about, we are intentional. And when we're intentional, about living lives of unity, having marriages that are unified, having families that are unified. Well, I think the blessing affects everybody who contributes to unity. So don't underestimate and say, oh, the church obviously wants us to be unified because, well, you know, they've got a church to run, but it goes so much deeper than that. The blessing, the power of unity. You ever been in an atmosphere of disunity? Again, it might be in a marriage. Bobby and I went on a vacation once with another couple many years ago, but their marriage was pretty close to finish. It didn't last much longer after that. I didn't remember being two weeks on a boat with this couple and it's so much tension. And that's what happens wherever there's disunity. Just so much tension, so much confusion. It just, but the promise is how pleasant. I mean, disunity is unpleasant. How pleasant. It is to live in unity. I'm telling you, everyone wants to be part of a church if you're a believer and you're, you're a lover of God's church. Everyone wants to be a part of a church where there's blessing. And there's a, there's a key to it. And it's called unity. Let's be people who have made that commitment to live our lives intentional, intentional about unity because of the blessing it brings. I love breathing the clean air of unity rather than the putrid air of disunity. And so thank you for that one person down there. I like you. 
So listen to it. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine and 12 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward, a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. My wife's not here. I wasn't warm last night. Sorry, I forgot this was the 10.30 service. I forgot. I was thinking this was that nine o'clock service, but no, 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 this is it. Got to behave myself here in the 10.30 service. <laughs> Listen to it. How can one be warm alone? Though one be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I think about the contention in the world right now. I mean, if it's like here, anything like it is right now in Australia, we've got people in church who are pro-vaccination, we've got people in church who are anti-vaccination. There's so much contention and strife. There's so many things that do need wisdom from above to lead. But honestly, if we just stay committed to unity, we don't gather around our attitudes on politics, our attitudes on uh, vaccinations, our attitudes on anything. We're here together around one name. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Number two, number two. Second thing the devil would love to steal and to kill and destroy is your joy. The strength and joy. Nehemiah chapter eight, verse 10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The strength and joy. And just like this blessing and unity, the devil would love to steal and kill and destroy it. The strength and joy, the devil would love to steal and to kill and to destroy. Don't underestimate what joy is. It's a different thing altogether than happiness. I think joy includes happiness, but joy is unlike happiness in that sometimes our happiness can be impacted by what's happening. And in life, let's be true and honest, there's not always great things happening to us, but joy is a spiritual quality. Joy is something deeper. It's hard to describe. I would say it involves peace. Even in the storm, it's peace. And the verb for peace is prosperity, by the way. And so it's well-being. That sense it's well with my soul. It is well with my soul. See, you should have got me up and I could have sung all those languages for you. I can do Fiji and Samoan. I can do African. I, yeah, hey, listen to me. It's, it's well-being. Peace, well-being. I think it's certainty. Joy, I'm talking about joy. It's certainty. I know that I know that I know. No matter what's going on, I know that God is in control. So joy, I see it as a settled feeling. Jesus, you know, who for the joy that was before him? Enjoyed the cross. The scripture talks about, in James chapter one, verse two, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> trials, trials and joy. It doesn't sound like they belong together to me, but it's the power of joy. It's take you deeper than whatever's happening right now. So the devil would love to steal, kill, destroy joy because it's strength. And number three, the devil would love to steal or kill or destroy your generosity. Generosity has power. There's so many promises in the word of God to the generous. And generosity goes so much further than what we do with our money. Obviously, that's a huge part of it. But it's a way of speaking. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of living. You know the power of encouragement. You speak life into people. That's all generous. The world of the generous, Proverbs 27 verse whatever. Actually, it's 11, isn't it? Verse 27. Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 27. And it, it says there, the word of the generous message, message it gets larger and larger. <laughs> I love 
living in a big, big world. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Generous people are big spirited. They live large. They're big thinking, they're big hearted, they're big spirited, and it affects everything they do. The eye of the generous will be blessed. So it's a way of seeing. I already said it's a way of thinking. It's a way of living and it starts with what's happening on the inside. The generous soul. It's talking about the soul. It's talking about the inside. A generous soul will be made rich. And you know something? That's where generosity comes from. I don't think it's possible to be stingy on the outside and everything be okay on the inside. Because honestly, the way we live, the way we feel, the way we think, the way we see, our heart for other people, when we hear about persecuted Christians and open doors and such an incredible ministry, you know, our heart warms toward it because we want to be generous. And generosity brings so much promise into your life because there's so many promises attached to it in the scriptures. I honestly think that even tithing, some people say, well, tithing's not generosity, it's it's just being obedient to the word of God. And it is obedience to the word of God. And it is trusting him and putting him first. But you know what? It's, it's also generosity because you make a choice. God is gonna take first place in my life. It's a choice. Generosity is so good to be around. You know the joy, the joy of generosity. I mean, kids, Christmas time, you were all excited because you've got them something you know that, they're gonna be so happy about. How does it make you feel as a parent? Generosity, it's the biggest impact is on yourself. It really is. And so let's live our lives in a generous way. Did I miss out joy? Ah, number three, joy. <laughs> Hello, you all good? You relaxed? Happy? Need a back massage? Happy to help, happy to help. Got to make the house of God a warm, friendly place to be. Now, there's a real ponytail. That's, hey, just stand up. Here's my ambition in life. Look at that. Fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That guy's got it down right there. Hey, joy. Did I? My preaching's so good, I forgot about it already. Or oh, maybe that's called being 67. <laughs> number four, you ready for number four? Zeal. Zeal. The devil will love to steal your zeal. I like that because it rhymes. He'll love to steal your zeal and kill its impact on your life and destroy what zeal, fire, passion can actually do. <laughs> zeal, you know what? I love being around zealous people, I do. Because it is passion and it's attractive and the devil would love to rob it from you. Human nature settles down. You don't have to do much to settle down. You've just got to exist. And so just like these other qualities, there's promises attached to zeal. <laughs> do you know what zeal is in the in the scriptures, zeal, David says, consumed him. It ate him up. So it's not something that's just kind of, it's something that's, it, it frames us. Passionate people are just good to be around. They are just good to be around. In the Oxford Dictionary, which is a real dictionary because we speak English and it's English. The Oxford Dictionary says, Great energy is describing zeal, great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. And of course I said, David said, Psalm 69 verse nine, zeal for your house has consumed me. And in the New Living Tra Tra Translation, it's passion for your house. Oh, let's be full of passion about life. The devil will try to steal that from you, kill you from, but, uh, from it, because why? Because zeal has power to it. 
So he'd love to get your circumstances to just cause you to lose your fire. Just become bland. Just lose that passion for life, passion for God, passion for the house of God, passion for the things of God. And I said it already, but I love being around passionate people because it's contagious. It really is contagious. <laughs> Zeal or passion, it'll get you up in the morning. It'll help you to count the cost and pay the price in whatever it is God's called you to do. Zeal, and it's contagious. It gets on you. Uh, we can, you, know, you can be a young person and be like living old. You could just settle down just like a couch and change the channel. And, so. and you can get an old, well, there's a 95-year-old man in the nine o'clock service sitting right there. How do I know? Because... I was talking about zeal and I was watching him and he was entering in, dressed in a suit and a tie and looking awesome. I go down and I ask him, he's 95. And you know what? He looks young spirited to me. If you're a young woman and still single, you're looking for a guy, you may not be, but if you are, can I just tell you, don't find some cat's potato blob just because he's handsome. Find someone who knows what they're about in life and they're zealous about it and they're passionate about it and they're committed to it and they're, <laughs> they're on a course. You know, you sometimes can wake up tired, but weary is not something that you just wake up one day. You grow weary and people grow weary and often life itself is what wearies us. And well, it's a choice. You know what the Bible says about weariness? It says, do not grow weary. Grow weary in doing good. For in due season, you will reap if you don't lose heart. That I was able to love to steal your zeal and have you living, having lost heart, discouraged. And that's why I want to encourage you to let, not let the devil be a robber to steal, to kill and destroy when it comes to being passionate, what's the thing God called you to? And are you still passionate about it? Because, well, it's contagious. And zeal, I can show you various scriptures that help you to see what it looks like. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses three and four. And this is Paul speaking to the Macedonians. And you know what? There's a lot of lessons to learn. The Macedonians were known for their generosity. And they're also known for their joy. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 3 and 4 says, Moreover, I make known to you the grace bestowed on the churches in Macedonia. Now listen, that in a great trial of affliction, they were going through very difficult times. The abundance of their joy, I talked about the strength of joy, and their deep poverty. Who would put joy and deep poverty into the same sentence? The abundance of their joy and deep poverty abounded in their generosity, the riches of their liberality. So joy and generosity and zeal, they all seem to work together. And I'll tell you right now, when someone, their heart's gone, maybe they got offended, maybe they're just drawing back spiritually, but their heart's gone. The first two things that will disappear are their joy. You can see it, their joy is gone and their generosity. But you know what? These Macedonians, they were going through their own global financial crisis, horrible economic times. And yet when it came to receiving an offering for the Christians who were suffering in Jerusalem, this is what their attitude was. Verse three, I bear witness, Paul saying, that according to their ability, yes, and beyond, I love zealous people because they live over and beyond, beyond their ability. They were freely willing. Now listen, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the offering. I mean, that's zeal. They're like, come on, come on, let's just receive. We wanna have fellowship in the ministry to the saints. That's what zeal looks like. Here's another version or another example of what zeal looks like. Listen to Nehemiah, shortest man in the Bible. There's a dad's joke. Warning right now, dad's joke. Nehemiah, all right? Wow, I'm gonna get you back rowers laughing sooner or later. So far it's been 
tough going with you guys, but I'm telling you what, I'm just for one second gonna come down there. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. I need my notes because I'm coming down there to make a point. Hold it a second here. Because I'm gonna tell you what zeal looks like. And so I'm coming back there. I'm coming back there. Don't have to be scared of Australians, we're harmless. Uh, Hello, sir. Costa Mesa. That's right where Bobby and I got a place down there. We're neighbors. Incredible. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. This is what zeal looks like. So Nehemiah chapter eight, verses four and six. So Ezra, the scribe, stood on a platform of wood. I'm on concrete here. And this is what happens. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was standing above all the people. And this, listen to what happens. This is zeal. And by the way, what he opened was the law. It's the old covenant. We live in a better covenant with better hope and better promises. But listen to what the word says here. <laughs> and so, it's awesome. You're in the front row now. You thought you were toward the back, middle maybe, but you're in the front row. Now listen to it. This is what happens. Ezra opened the book. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. This is the law he opened. He talked about zeal. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, amen, amen. And this is before Acts chapter two in the day of Pentecost. These people weren't even charismatic. They answered, amen, amen, while lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their face to the ground. My goodness, imagine next Sunday morning, all Pastor Casey has to do is open the book and the whole place stands up and shouts, amen, amen, with their hands in the air and then falls to the ground and worships the Lord. There we're having church. That's what zeal looks like. And so I came back here because we're gonna give it a go, all right? Remember, Ezra opened a book. Any of you people still bring like a physical Bible to church? Because I know we've got it. Here we go, look at you. Look at you, the most spiritual guy in the church today. Incredible. So here it is. All Ezra did is open the book. And remember, I'm gonna open it now. When he did, everyone stood up. They shouted, amen, amen, with their hands in the air. And then we'll forget the last part because it might be chaos. They fell to the ground with their faces on the floor. So we'll forget that part, but I'm about to open the book. Amen, amen, hands in the air. Hands in the air. <laughs> Standing up, amen, amen, hands in the air. You ready for it? Ezra. Ezra opened the book. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> oh, you did pretty good. You did pretty good back there. Well done. <laughs> I love church. Church is to be enjoyed, not endured. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people go to church and it's a very long hour. I love, that's why I love being around zeal. It, 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 it's what it does in you. I'm telling you, grow and weary. It, it, it's not a pleasant way to live your life. So the devil would love to steal your zeal. And this, oh, I forgot they both stole the guy's Bible. Thank you, sir. Yours is better than mine. Here, you can have my one. <laughs> Number five. Number five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> Number five. The devil would love to steal, kill, and destroy your focus. Because focus has power. And life is full of distractions. You can be distracted by whispers over there. You can be distracted by alternatives. Maybe moving house. You think that's gonna answer all your problems. And, and distractions everywhere. And zeal and focus. These are things that I'm telling you will cause you to live in the blessing of God and with great reward, and seeing your dreams coming true, and seeing God open doors. So you might think, well, these are just simple little things, but the fact is they are all got power. The power of reward, the power of blessing, the power of strength, the power of zeal. So when it comes to focus, the Apostle Paul, he said, this one thing I do. He is a tent maker, 
He wrote much of the New Testament. He, <laughs> he obviously was an apostle. He helped to pioneer and establish churches. He wrote so much of the Word of God, but he said, this one thing I do. He knew he was about one thing. What's your one thing? Maybe you've got all sorts of things, but what's your one thing? Who did God call you to be? What did God call you to do? What kind of father did he ask you to be? This one thing. I'm not very good at very many things. That's actually a fact. I, I've been going to golf with my sons because I want to spend more time with them. But I'm a horrible golfer. And I mean, now I've been trying hard for a year, but I'm actually no better than the day I started. I'm an awful golfer. It's just a fact. Yeah. I've broken more golf clubs than most people have ever owned. <laughs> actually, that's not even true. I've never thrown a golf club. Never. I mean, I'll tell you, Casey Treat couldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm not very good at many things, but I've only been called by God to do one thing, and that's to work with Jesus, the master builder, in the building of the church, and to be a Christian leader, and to see people fulfill their potential. So, well, that's three things. No, that's one thing. That's the one thing God's called me to. And all I have to be good at is what God graced me for. And we can get caught up in so many different things that try to distract us. Well, the Bible talks about single-heartedness as a spiritual gift. It's actually a spiritual gift. Hey, listen to it in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 12. It says, the hand of God was on Judah, God, on, you know, the people of Judah. The hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart. And so it was the hand of God on their lives that gave them that singleness of heart. What, what is that one thing? How committed are you to it? What's trying to distract you from it? What voices are you listening to? I'm telling you, focus has power. It has power. Joshua chapter one, verse seven. Of course, this is the word of the Lord to Joshua. God was giving him a promise of huge expansion. And in verse seven says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Now listen, do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. And now, why would the devil love to steal, kill, and destroy your focus? Because then you will be successful in everything you do. When, when, when you refuse to be deviated and you refuse to look to the left and look to the right and you decide, my life is about this. And you know what? Maybe you're a business person. You say, I want to I wanna make money for the kingdom of God. That's your one thing. Well, let's not get distracted from it. Maybe you're, you're a mom. And your one thing is to raise children in the ways of the Lord and to see them prosper and blossom in the things that God's called them to. That's your one thing. What's your one thing? Some people don't know. If I've had one advantage in life, it's since I was a five-year-old boy. I really only wanted to know, only one thing I ever wanted to do, and that's exactly what I'm doing today. And what an advantage that has been because so many people, so many people can't say that, and it's sad. So we're not looking to the left, we're not looking to the right, we're not being dev deviated. What we're doing is believing we'll be successful in everything that we do. Number six, the sixth thing, the devil would love to steal, kill, and destroy is your confidence. And here it is again, why would he attack confidence? Because the Bible tells us that confidence has great reward. It's the reward he's intimidated by. It's the blessing he's intimidated by. It's the strength that'll come to your life that he's intimidated by. And to Hebrews 10, 35, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, great reward reward. And I tell you, confidence is always vulnerable. And especially when the foundation is not right. Because often we think of confidence as being self-confidence. But self is never a good foundation for confidence. Godly confidence is built on a different foundation. 
whether you agree with me or not, I'm telling you, human nature is insecure. Every human being deals with insecurity to some degree or another because it's part of the sin nature. But I believe through godly confidence, we have a confidence that's not moved by circumstance. It's not moved by situation. When I was younger preaching, I started thinking about myself. Well, I'd lost confidence very quickly. I'd tighten up because my foundation was wrong. I talked to Joyce Meyer once. You've heard of Joyce Meyer. I asked her, do you ever get nervous when you preach? She just looked at me like it was the silliest question she'd ever heard. She said, no. She said, I don't even think about myself when I preach. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It sounds simple. But confidence will get attacked. The devil will attack it. And it's not hard to lose your confidence. Whether you're a pastor like myself or whether you're in some other area of life, life itself can just undermine confidence. But I'm telling you, when your confidence has a good foundation, godly confidence, there's promises in the word of God. Listen to this. Proverbs 3 verse 26. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Proverbs 14, verse 26, I love this one. In the fear of the Lord, which is in awe of God, reverence of God. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. In other words, that's much more unshakable. Strong confidence. (laughs) And his children will have a place of refuge. You know something, if you're struggling in your confidence, and people are, and people do, then decide I'm gonna build my confidence in what God says, what God says about me, what God says about my future, what God says about what's forgiven. When God says about who I am, what my life is all about, and that confidence is strong confidence, and that's the confidence that's not easily shaken. And then I'll finish with number seven, faith. The devil would love to undermine your faith. I'll tell you why. Because he'd love to steal and kill and destroy your faith because your relationship with God is dependent on it. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it's not faith in faith. It's in faith in God. And faith brings evidence. No wonder the devil hates it. In other words, the miracle is in your arms. Pointing to Moses and the miracle is in your arms. Faith is substance and it's evidence of what right now is unseen. No wonder the devil hates it when a miracle is a baby in your arms, when a miracle is something that looked impossible, when a miracle is when, (laughs) so yeah, your faith will get attacked. It's inevitable that our faith will get attacked. But if our faith again has strong foundation, it's built on what God said about me, who God is, what the promise of God is, what the word of the Lord is, and you build that faith and refuse to let the devil steal it from you because faith also has great reward. If you believe it, say amen. Shout hallelujah. Say God is good. You know what I, 30 years ago, I'd come to conferences here, I still remember. I used to sing all the time. I've got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 I've got a feeling every. Anyone remember that? Anyone been here long enough to remember that? (laughs) Oh, look at that, fossils back there. It's great to have you here. Hey, seriously, right now, I wonder how many people here, at least one of the seven things I mentioned. You know, the devil's really tried to attack it. Confidence, unity, joy, strength, generosity, passion and zeal, uh, focus. The devil's tried to steal it from you. Let me pray for you right now. All over this place, everywhere, every person who says, yep, in one of those areas the devil has tried to steal and kill and destroy. He's seeking whom he may devour, but I've decided he may not. If that's you, just raise your hand in the air. All over the place, just raise them in the air. And thank God for you. And Lord, you see these hands that are raised? 
And in Jesus' name, I thank you that the enemy may try to plunder, but he may not. He will not. He cannot. The gates of hell will not prevail. So, Lord, I just pray that when it comes to these things that have blessing attached to them, great reward attached to them, Father, they've got strength attached to them. Lord, they've got fruitfulness attached to them. That we'll remember who we are in Christ and we will decide he may not. And we will see the promise come true and the blessing that God has for our lives. See it materialize, see it come to pass. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm excited tonight. <laughs> Samoan? Samoan? Fijian? Fijian? Full of a naka. <laughs> nice gold medal at the Olympics too. See, I know, I know my countries. Yeah, because yeah, they live in my part of the world. Fijian? Samoan. See, I told you I can tell easy. It's obvious. <laughs> well, listen to me. Firstly, I've got to say I'm really excited about the revival night tonight. I think it's going to be awesome. And let's be zealous and passionate and get into the house of God. And then the next thing I want to ask you, it's a serious question. Have you personally ever made a conscious decision to surrender ownership of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you ever encountered Him in a personal way? By encounter Him, I mean there's a time when you know that you know that you know that Jesus came into your life. I know there's people here today and maybe you've never really made that conscious choice. You're open to God, but you've never really made that choice to serve Jesus. Or maybe you've never really had that God encounter. This is your day. Today is the day of salvation. What a powerful day to decide. Today's a life-defining day. You know what? The Bible says if you ask Jesus to come into your life, He will come in and He'll live in you. It's a promise. He doesn't just come visit sometimes. He lives in you. Now I'm gonna, in just a moment, ask everyone to close your eyes and now I'm going to count to three, and on three, I'm going to ask every single person everywhere, it says, Brian, when you pray for people to make that conscious choice for Jesus, to be saved, to be born again, to encounter God in a personal way, now I want to pray for you. In fact, the whole church will pray together. And so remember that. If you say, Brian, I want this to be my day, then on three, when I get there, you raise your hand. Then there's other people here who maybe at some point you lost your way. I mean, you love God, maybe. And maybe even one time you're serving Him, but you know, spiritually speaking, you're not in a good place. God doesn't move. He's the constant. I mean, He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He's the constant, but we can make life choices that have us living alienated, separated from the will of God for our lives. What a beautiful, perfect day to come back and say, Jesus at the center. What a beautiful day it is. And so again, we say, Brian, when you pray for people to get right with God, to turn from their backslide, to make this a brand new day, then on three, you raise your hand. And listen, I'm telling you, you don't need to worry. You're not going to be the only person. There'll be many, many hands raised all over this building. So can we stand together right now? Let's stand, everyone, everywhere. Let's stand. And if you say, Brian, please include me in that prayer, then on three, you raise your hand. We have every eye closed. Every person thinking about where you're at spiritually. Come on everywhere. Let's close our eyes and think about our own situation and then pray for other people at the same time. And on three, if you say, Brian, include me in that prayer, then you raise your hand. You ready for it? Ready to raise your hand on three? Here we go. One, two, three. Lift them up right now. Lift them high. Powerful, powerful, powerful. You know, there was a couple of people at least that I saw with their hands raised before I even got to count. How cool this is. Anyone else quick before we pray? You join the many people around this room who've got their hands raised and you decide this is my day as well. And can we give these people a huge congratulations and thank God for them? Thank God for them. 
And everyone, everyone, let's pray this prayer out loud, out loud, with zeal. Let's pray this prayer together. You ready? Say this after me. Every, the whole church family, but if you raise your hand, you pray this to God. So pray these words. Dear Jesus, this is the moment I surrender ownership of my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of you, Jesus, from this moment, my sins are forgiven. I'm a child of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for your forgiveness and mercy. I am a believer. Jesus is alive in me. Ah, uh, come on, one more time. Give those people a big, big congratulations. And thanks for being here this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, church family, I hope you were encouraged by that and that there was something that you believe God really just spoke over you in the last 35, 40 minutes. I really just pray and I'm believing that um, each one of you took away one of those points and was like, that one was for me. Um, I know I did. I know there was one that I was like, whoa, uh, he is reading my mail right now. So I hope you guys had one of those moments as well. I think those are just really great um, moments where God is like, I'm talking to you. I hope you know I'm talking to you. So um, you guys can go back and rewatch this if you want to listen to it again, if you want to just um, kind of dive a little bit deeper into those scriptures. It is available for y'all on our website. Um, but I just really want to celebrate everyone who prayed that prayer for the first time because that is amazing and it's huge. It is a massive decision that you just made. It is the best decision that you will ever make in your entire life. And in heaven right now, I hope you know that they are throwing a party because you made that decision. A party that is for you. And so that's just so awesome that we serve a God that loves us so much that when we choose him, he's like, all right, guys, everybody stop what you're doing. We're partying right now because this is a moment we need to celebrate. So we are celebrating that moment with y'all as well. And you might be wondering, okay, now what? I just prayed that prayer. Do I just go on living the way I'm living? No, we want you to text journey to 21777 and we will send you the journey link that will, um, or a link to the journey book um, that will explain the next steps of um, Christian living and that new walk that you're doing with Jesus. And you'll get to build intimacy and relationship with him through the things like um, the devotional that we have, the Bible study that is all in that journey book. So we really want to encourage y'all, text journey to 2177 and we'll send that to you ASAP. Also, if you haven't done this already, I know we talked about this at the beginning of service, but download that Christian Faith Church app because Christianity 101 is for you. Christianity 101 is such a great resource for you because it explains those foundations of our faith and it will really just help aid these, um, this next step for you. As well as you need a Bible. You really need to be diving into the Word and I'm promising you that it's going to be what transforms you completely that as you read your Bible, as you um, learn more about the character of God and familiarize yourself with his voice through the reading of his word, life will look totally different. It's going to be such an amazing journey. And I'm so excited for you guys because there is something big coming for you. All right. But before we go, I want to pray a quick prayer over y'all. Father, I thank you and I praise you for every person under the sound of my voice. God, I thank you that you love them so much and that you see every need, every feeling, every hurt, everything that they're walking through. You see that and you tell them, I've got this and I've got you. Father, I pray that you are folding everyone into a loving embrace. God, that if they need comfort in this moment, God, you are bringing them comfort. If they need healing, Father, you remind them that by the stripes of Jesus on the cross, they have been healed and they can walk in their healing. Father, I just thank you and I praise you because you are so good to us and that you help us to build joy in our lives. You help us to build unity. You help us to build um, confidence and strength in all of the beautiful spiritual gifts that you have gifted us um, freely through the sacrifice of your son. So Father, we worship you and we praise you in this moment and we thank 
you for everything that you are walking with us through. Lord, we give you all of the glory and all of the honor in Jesus' name, amen. All right, church, we'll see you next week. you guys.